In this video, I'm gonna share with you everything that you need to know about Instagram Reels. And this is important because just look at my own Instagram analytics and what I've seen in just the last two weeks since I've started taking Reels seriously. And what you have right now is a small window of time where you can take a massive leap forward on social with your church in terms of followers, reach, and engagement, but you can't wait. So let's dive into this video and I'll explain every important thing you need to know. Well, hey there, I'm Brady Shearer. This is Pro Church Tools, and we're here to help your church navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. If we're just meeting for the first time, consider subscribing. If you're already subscribed, turn on notifications. I mean, seriously, what are you waiting for? Hit the bell, turn on those instant alerts for when we drop new videos, and of course, for all of us, for everyone, hit the like button. It really does make a difference. I'm traveling on the road this week, posted up in the Canadian Rockies, so you'll have to bear with me, you know, just in a different uh, lighting setup. Uh, but I wanted to get this video out ASAP. It couldn't wait until I got back. So on August 5th, 2020, this year, Instagram released Reels to more than 50 countries around the world. Now, what are Reels? Well, they're 15 second videos that you can set to music. If you're familiar with TikTok at all, it's a very similar idea. One of the key differences being the length though, because on TikTok, you can have videos that go up to 60 seconds. On Reels, as of this recording, it's just 15. So what makes Reels different compared to all of the other features Instagram has to offer, which is a lot. You know, we've got the feed, stories, live, IGTV, AR filter, shop, and so much more. What makes Reels different though is discoverability. Think about it this way. Instagram is a very saturated platform and reaching new people is not easy. Reels though is the exception because much like TikTok, the algorithm is designed to help you discover new content and new creators. And this presents a massive opportunity for churches. Here's why. There are basically two kinds of social media platforms in the world, established platforms and emerging platforms. An established platform would be a Facebook, an Instagram, a YouTube, and what we like about these platforms, and the reason we use them, is because they are massively popular. And the demographics of these platforms are broadly representative of all ages, income levels, ethnicities, level of education, etc. We get frustrated with established platforms though because it's difficult to reach new people. They're so big, it's not easy to break through. On the other hand, we have emerging platforms like TikTok. And we like these platforms because it's easy to reach new people. With TikTok especially, there's an element of predictable virality. But we get frustrated with these platforms because they, they're just not as popular, because they're newer. And the users on these platforms, well, they're not broadly representative of the general population. They're gonna skew much younger, in fact. So if your church is older or not especially tech forward, you may see the opportunity that an emerging platform presents, but it might not make sense for you to jump in because it won't be serving your existing congregation in any way. This brings us to Instagram Reels, the exception, the rare convergence of both an established platform and an emerging platform, the best of both worlds. Because with Reels, you get the growth potential of an emerging platform paired with the audience size of an established platform. And so, and I cannot say this emphatically enough, do not wait. Start creating Reels content now because social opportunities like this are incredibly rare. My guess, within 60 to 90 days of this video's published date, maybe less, this window of opportunity will have closed. And look, I get it. As a church, it's difficult to be an early adopter with emerging platforms, and you know, TikTok has its own baggage, but this is again what makes the launch of Reels so special. You get the benefits of an emerging platform without a lot of the drawbacks. For example, take a look at my own Instagram analytics for the seven day period shortly after I started taking Reels seriously. And for me, that means posting new Reels about three times per week. Now, don't worry about the raw numbers so much because those don't really have context. Look instead at the huge increase in impressions. This shows that I've reached almost twice as many accounts on Instagram as I did in a previous week. And that's all coming from Reels and it's baked in discoverability because Instagram wants Reels to succeed. And it knows that the secret behind TikTok's success has been its algorithm. So if Instagram wants to replicate that success, their algorithm has to be similar. Now, reach is great and all, but how is this translated to account growth? Well, since diving into Reels, my follower count is growing at about 3% each week, whereas normally my follower count grows by about 3% each month, so a considerable increase. 
Another benefit of this, and this might be what I'm most excited about with Reels right now if I'm truly honest, now I can create a single 15 second video and publish it to both Reels and TikTok. Create once, publish twice. And I'll be the first to admit that I haven't published as consistently as I would have liked in the past few months to TikTok, and that's just because, you know, it's lower on my list of platform priorities. But since the launch of Reels, now I have the rare luxury on social of creating once and publishing twice. And just look at my TikTok analytics over the last 28 days. Can you see the Reels effect? Let's now talk about the kind of content you should be posting to Reels and how to make it work for you. Now, I published another video earlier this year called the first four TikTok videos your church needs to make. So I'll have that linked in the description below. The ideas that are discussed there, they carry over to Reels, so I'm not gonna rehash those, but let me take you through my own Reels creation process because I think it'll be helpful. There are six parts to it. First, I batch produce my Reels. So usually I'll do three at a time. You know, again, we're here in the Rockies this week and so I filmed three since I got here. And what I love about creating Reels compared to let's say a YouTube video like this is how fast they are to create because 15 seconds is not a long time. And this leads to the second part of my Reels creation process, which is that I script out my videos word for word. Each script is about 50 words or fewer. And the reason I script them is because, like I said, 15 seconds is short. And for my Reels to be good, I can't waste a single word. And that demands a script. And side note here, this is why I don't think the popular church social post of a sermon excerpt will work for Reels. You know, it's hard enough already to cut down a sermon excerpt to 60 seconds for the Instagram feed or for TikTok. So I don't think it's realistic at all for a 15 seconds or fewer video. Part three of my Reels creation process is that I record a voiceover of my written script. So I don't record my audio and video at the same time like I am now. I record my audio separately and then overlay video on top of it. I find this makes the creation process a bit easier. It's also just a stylistic choice I make. And here's what a finished Reels looks like when it's done this way. Editing your church photos part three. What do you do when your photo is dark and noisy? Hold down Option on Mac or Alt on PC while sharpening your image to only sharpen the edges and then apply noise reduction. Now your image will be sharp, but free from excessive noise. Now, you may have noticed the intro clip on that Reels, and that's part four of my workflow. Here, I'll show my face and put up the title of the video. And this is because I know many people will be seeing this video and have no idea who I am. Because remember, the whole point of Reels is discoverability. So if people are stumbling upon this Reels without knowing me at all, well, they have no reason to watch. So I need to build a rapport with them, and fast. Showing my face creates a instinctual human connection, and putting up the title of the video states its purpose immediately and gives a new viewer the choice of whether they wish to commit or keep swiping. Number five, I group my reels into series. The one that's been the most popular so far has been editing your church photos. And what's great about a series is, again, when someone stumbles upon your video and gets introduced to you for the first time, if they like your reels, it stands to reason they would want to see more content that's similar. So if they find a reels of mine that's titled editing your church photos part three, well, they might be inclined to head to my profile to see parts one and two. Now they're also more likely to follow me and maybe go through my entire catalog of posts from the past. Number six, hashtags. So important when it comes to reels. This is where your discoverability comes from. So don't do all the work of creating reels and then publishing them without hashtags. I put mine right in the caption of the reels. And if you're curious what hashtags to include, we did a separate video on this a couple of years ago. And even though the video is older, I still use the same three pronged approach to generating my own hashtags. I'll link that in the description below as well. Finally, a custom cover. A nice feature of reels that TikTok does not have, the ability to upload your own cover from your camera roll instead of being forced to use a frame grab from the video itself. And for those that are obsessive with how their Instagram feed looks and don't wanna make it look too jumbled with reels in their feed, you will certainly appreciate this feature. Let's now close out with the all important question on everyone's mind, will reels supplant TikTok? Impossible to say. I'm also not in the habit of making predictions about social media. There's way too much opportunity right now to take advantage of that I have zero interest in speculating on what's next. Hey, here's what I do know though. Short form video is here to stay. Educating, motivating, and entertaining folks in 15 to 60 second videos has been cemented as a permanent social media construct, just like stories did five years ago. And the sooner that you're able to embrace it, the better, because it ain't going anywhere. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, hit like. Because come on, you're seriously still here after 10 minutes and you're not gonna hit the thumbs up button? Not cool.
Not cool at all. For everyone that did hit like, I appreciate you. Subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. We'll talk soon. Oh,